Crim 2 News 10 at 10 begins now with Mark Hammerhan and Jeremy Legue. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Crem 2 News 10 at 10, where we give you more news in less time. Let's start tonight with our night beat to take a quick look at the day's top stories. A Spokane middle school was placed in a lockdown this morning after a middle school student was arrested for allegedly bringing a loaded handgun to school. It happened at Shaw Middle School. According to Spokane police, another student told school staff after the 12 year old boy showed him the gun. That's when staff called 911. School resource officers quickly found the student and took his backpack away. Officers say they found a loaded handgun in his backpack. That boy was arrested a short time later and booked into a juvenile detention center. In a letter to Shaw parents today, the school's principal said, quote, in a crisis, our top priority is the safety of our school community. While we aim to communicate with families as quickly as possible, our responsibility is to address and resolve the situation efficiently and provide families with accurate, timely information. Please know that our teachers shared our school's process for keeping students safe, unquote. In our effort to bring you more to every story, we are looking into how schools in our area are responding to student threats. Thomas Gandy with Coeur d'Alene Public Schools says the district's new student threat assessment policy simply puts into writing a model the district has been using using for the past few years to determine if a student threat is credible. We want them to understand the steps we're taking, the, the, the things we have in place to make sure that we vet those threats and that they are safe to send their students to school. When a threat assessment has been warranted, a team of school professionals may interview the student who made the threat. The policy states this may help determine the level of risk associated with the threat, which will help develop an appropriate response to the incident. If the student responsible for the threat does not participate in the interview and assessment, the policy states they could face additional disciplinary action, including expulsion. Meantime, the suspect accused of shooting and killing a man outside of a Spokane Valley Safeway was arrested across state lines. Spokane County deputies say 43-year-old Jonathan Bryman shot and killed 53-year-old William McCreet in Millwood early Saturday morning. Deputies believe the pair met in the Safeway parking lot for a possible drug deal. Bryman was arrested in Hayden yesterday. He remains in custody pending extradition back to Spokane County to face second-degree murder charges. And that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just head to our website. That's Krem.com. All right, taking a break from the headlines, let's switch gears, take a first look at the forecast with Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Lagoo. Jeremy, after a wonderful stretch of weather to kick off the week, things are a-changing right about now, right? Oh, the rain is already creeping its way into eastern Washington. We've got it popping up on radar. And get this, 60 degrees right now. The temperature outside right now is about where we top out Tomorrow it is going to be that kind of weather pattern. 70 is where we topped out today and 70s were pretty widespread across the inland northwest. But there it is. Our cold front already creeping its way through central Washington. There it is. Rain just out in front of it. Behind it comes the cold air and it's creeping its way in. Ritzville starting to see some of those showers. Moses Lake, you've been in it for a bit and it is going to continue to trek its way through. A little after midnight, it'll start here in Spokane, creep its way into Washington, and tomorrow morning we wake up to widespread showers across much of the inland northwest. Those will turn into scattered showers as we move into the afternoon, and then the wind picks up, ushering in cooler temperatures in the days to come. Tomorrow we top out around 60, Thursday 53, Friday morning we wake up to temps near freezing. Oh boy. All right, Jeremy, thank you very much. We'll check back in with you later in the show. New tonight, the Idaho Department of Corrections sent out its updated protocol for execution. This comes eight months after the unsuccessful execution of Thomas Creech, the state's longest serving death row inmate. Back in February, medical staff could not establish an IV line for Creech, forcing officials to stop the execution. Now IDOC has a preparation room where medical staff will first try to establish an IV through the vein. It's a procedure correction says they couldn't do in February because they didn't have the appropriate space. The new policy also changes how witnesses would watch the procedure. For more details, just head to our website. That's Krem.com. Meantime, Boeing plans to borrow $10 billion from several banks as the company tries to shore up cash. That's according to a new regulatory filing today. According to our Seattle sister station, Boeing also plans to raise $25 billion by selling various stock and debt. Boeing's credit rating has plunged to the lowest investment grade level just above junk bond status, according to the S&P. 
New tonight, Clark Fork residents under a boil order after a water main break yesterday. According to the town's Facebook page, residents need to boil water until further notice. We are just three weeks out from Election Day, and tonight the Spokane NAACP chapter hosted a candidate forum in Town Hall to hear from those running for Spokane County Commissioner. Grim 2's Channing Curtis helped moderate tonight's debate. Our very own Connor McAvoy is live tonight in the studio with the key takeaways. Connor? Spokane NAACP hosted the second annual candidate forum with Commissioner Al French and his opponent, candidate Molly Marshall. Both were asked a series of questions by panelists regarding a variety of topics. Two that stood out were regarding the function of the Spokane County Jail and services for those who suffer from homelessness across the county. Both candidates were asked how they would work to decrease the jail population. Candidate Marshall says after visiting the jail, she believes looking into building a new one as well as a new jail system with a focus on rehabilitation and reintegration services. Getting all the experts at the table to put together a plan that actually meets the needs of all. Um, that didn't happen uh, on the last measure, and we've wasted taxpayers' dollars. we got to take it to the taxpayers again. Commissioner French says he's worked in his time as commissioner to address the size of the county jail, saying mental health resources play a key factor in overcrowding and safety. I was there when we started the blueprint for reform because I knew we had to re, uh, reform the criminal justice system. It's much more than just a jail cell. It's how do you keep the community safe. Both candidates were also asked to address the homeless population across Spokane County. Commissioner French says the county provides financial resources to the city and nonprofits dealing with the issue, but says reform is a two-way street. I am more than happy to help uh, folks that are in a situation of homelessness, but I do want accountability. I want a commitment that you are going to work with us to make an improvement in your life. We want them to be contributing members of our community. Candidate Marshall says identifying different circumstances resulting in homelessness is key and says it's the county's responsibility to use existing funds in varying services across the county. There's a lot of money just sitting there waiting to be invested. The county can do more by investing in uh, more services related to behavioral health. But the key to this is coming together and working as a region. The Spokane NAACP hosted the forum at Spokane's Central Library. Reporting in studio, Connor McAvoy, CREM2 News. Connor, thank you very much. And CREM2 is working to bring you more from the candidates before Election Day. We are hosting several events to help you hear from them. This Thursday is a U.S. Senate debate between incumbent Senator Maria Cantwell and challenger Dr. Raul Garcia. You can watch it exclusively on KSKN 22. The debate runs from noon until 1 p.m. Plus, a bit later this month, CREM2 is hosting a 5th Congressional District debate. Candidates Carmela Conroy and Michael Baumgartner will be right here in the CREM2 studio on Wednesday, October 30th. The hour-long debate starts at 7 that night on CREM2, KSKN 22, CREM2 Plus, and CREM.com. Well, it was a special day for a few of our local sports heroes, as today they were officially inducted into the Inland Northwest Sports Hall of Fame. Crim 2's Andrew Quinn joining us now with more on today's ceremony. Andrew? Yeah, Mark, six area legends had cubbies added to the Wall of Fame inside the Spokane Arena, beginning with current Gonzaga women's basketball assistant coach Stacy Kleinsmith. The former Mead Panther was inducted alongside Washington State men's basketball legend Isaac Fontaine, former WSU volleyball head coach Jen Greeny, legendary Colfax volleyball coach Sue Deering, former NHL referee Dennis LaRue, and former KXLY sports director Bud Namick. The event was well attended with such guests as both coach Don and Dan Munson and WSU athletic director Ann McCoy. The inductees all feel honored to join the elite company of the Inland Northwest. It was the community that really supported women's basketball at that time and really kind of fueled my fire actually so I'm being honored by my hometown which means the world to me um, and and really there's so many people that put me here. I grew up here in this area and my dad's in the Hall of Fame and you know so many great athletes, coaches, broadcasters, um, you know sports people of this community are in here so it just means a lot. Well, it's such a huge honor and then you know being part of basketball you come and we're gonna see I'm gonna get my own cubby hole. 
That's pretty exciting. That is exciting, Sue. You can view the Inland Northwest Hall of Fame, of course, on the main floor of the Spokane Arena. Mark. Andrew, thank you very much. And that was your Creme 2 News 10 at 10, where you get more news in less time.